Hi everyone, I'm Ben, and this is the Board Game Blueprint. This week, we're going to be revisiting a little talk that I gave Stream of Consciousness at the Playful by Design Symposium in collaboration with Kudo Plays. In it, I talk quite a bit, extensively, about community and the value that it has on being an active member of one in the board game design industry. So let's jump on over to that talk next door and see what we have in store. Hi everyone, I'm your friend Ben Moy and this is my talk, uh, Value in Community, something along those lines. I have been a, well, how I got into games is as a participant in the friendly local board game design competition in Champaign-Urbana called Kudo Plays, which uh, I think a few of our speakers previously in the day had also been participating in. And uh, it was two seasons ago that I actually entered in a game called Break It Up a Notch and come uh, two years later to today, this summer, and it was actually signed and released as a published game, uh, rebranded as Breakdance and Meeples and published by Atlas Games. So I have to attribute the board game design community as a large part of how this game even came into being. Uh, starting with, yeah, those few years ago when I first entered the Kudo Plays competition. And for me, that is what kind of the industry is all about, play, design, and creating memorable experiences that you can share with others. In this current time, it's a little bit more difficult, but thankfully we have different resources available that allow us to still be playing games together. And I find that having a community, whether it is a close knit band of people or maybe my secret goal, the entire world, it will all uh, be worth it and, and get you even further ahead, farther along in your process than you might even be able to only by yourself. When we look at communities, there are a few different types. We have, yeah, like the local one that you are probably uh, within the first degree of, we'll say. Uh, this could be as simple as your neighborhood. Uh, even smaller than that, yeah, just again, some few close people that you are playtesting your games with internally. Or uh, outside of that, another hobby that you might have, including film or uh, books, reading, and so many other ways to just grow and foster relationships with other people. I think that having a community certainly brings out the best in us, whether it is our uh, passions, yeah, that ignite and are further uh, enhanced or invoked by others, uh, just trying to lift each other up so, so much. And that is where I have found myself to thrive as well. With the Kudo Plays competition, uh, started in yep, Champaign-Urbana, I'd say I think the community was at least 50 members strong there. Uh, between the fellow competitors and then kind of regular play testers, uh, the committee as well, and so on. And it was in that time that I also joined a few online communities. Uh, just like there is probably a hobby or niche for anything, there's also a whole ton of flavors regarding the board game design community or board game playing community as well. And kind of going out a little bit and finding the one that resonates with, uh, resonates with you the most has been, again, kind of what's gotten me to where I am and I'm so, so grateful for it. Uh, the one that I'm most frequently on is called the Board Game Design Lab Community Facebook Group. Yeah, a whole mouthful there. BGDL is the acronym. And what's great to me is that it allows for pretty much posting of, of any kind of question or share, kind of a little bit of promotion that you'd be interested in. And I like that because there are other groups as well who have a little bit more stricter rules, um, which is also totally fine if that's the slant that you want, if that's the angle that you're coming in at specifically. Uh, there are mechanics-based groups. There are groups about uh, publishing questions, including things like uh, manufacturing a board game, different costs for uh, fulfillment, and uh, different distributors to kind of contact and such and such. The entire scope of the board game design process, there is absolutely a community for it. And 
that is another part of community, like I said earlier, about being able to build each other up. You can ask questions in these safe spaces and we'll learn from the mistakes of others. Just kind of uh, stand on the shoulders of other giants who have come before you. And that way you don't have to worry necessarily as much uh, about falling a little bit flatter in those ways. For me, community has definitely grown a little bit larger than Champaign-Urbana, uh, kind of starting out, yeah, at university there. And now I'm very happy to say through communities like BGDL and uh, as Kudo Plays even continues to grow more and more, meeting people from outside the local areas, outside the states and even outside the country um, with our internet capabilities and, and opportunities. I've been able to befriend people from all over the globe and it is just so much fun to be able to, though we may be uh, different with cultures and uh, nuances in language, there is a, a unison, a unity in board games and the drive and passion, love of the hobby really. And that is absolutely what has gotten me to stick around. I think it's great because we can just always share with each other and we can always have hopefully something constructively supportive to say constructive criticism is my favorite kind when you have a compliment sandwich you tell somebody what you really like something that you might be able to uh or that you feel could be improved and then another compliment to close out for the night is how i try to go about it and offering those feelings and emotions shared experiences with people just brings everyone again closer and closer i think that now though i've maybe on a whim sort of sent a facebook friend request to someone uh, i will eventually come to interact with them more and more and uh, thank you algorithms for doing so but also building yep that personal relationship personal connection and making it so that we hopefully yeah you know do become closer to being friends more and more as time goes on community is for board game design uh especially constructive where like i touched on uh, you can learn from the mistakes of others uh, i personally try to find uh, a little bit of extra time when i can uh, offering advice or, or sort of at least what i've kind of gone through when relaying to a newer designer uh, in as much detail as i can i think because of this distance that we have through the screen it can be very easy to simply leave uh, kind of short and curt replies which uh, may not necessarily be intended as dismissive or anything like that but you can never really tell with with that extra degree of, of separation and which is why I prefer if I can to spell out as many of my thoughts and ideas as possible uh, again yeah in this digital age when when everything is about instant gratification it can be very easy to let ourselves fall into that i don't want to say trap but comfort zone and if you're able and willing mostly able uh to offer a little bit more than that i think that absolutely shows through in in the action of doing so when it comes to oh i had another excellent point i'd like to think about community is that um that's right outside of games too we continue to support each other uh, it's not like that's the only thing that we have in common. And we'll find out through chats, through conversations, through questions and answers that uh, there are a couple other things that will tie us together. Uh, like I said, film and books. Uh, rock climbing, I feel like, is a really uh, shared interest or common interest uh, amongst the gamers recently, which is great. And I wish I could be doing more of that. But with the communities online, that's right there is so much opportunity to not have to do things on your own and it's totally great to do so but it there's nothing wrong with asking for a little help from our friends and, and relying on others uh, when we need it most uh, especially in these kind of trying times when things are very in the air and uncertain uh, it can be great to have a rock uh, in someone that you know uh, for sure i have kind of uh, been been recruited uh, into a few different smaller groups of board game designers and playtesters and and right now yeah they are some of my closest friends uh, as we talk 
daily, nearly, about what we're working on and just how things are treating us um, in these kind of yeah unprecedented times. But I, I yes, have cast a wide net in terms of the communities that I am part of, and I think. If I may be so bold, uh, that that is a great approach to start out with. Just just uh, sample, taste test a little bit of everything, and then find which places, which groups and communities uh, are your favorites, and then just you know stay in those for a lot of the time. Uh, for me, I am a big fan of a print-on-demand service called Game Crafter. And I have loved being a part of their Facebook community as well. Facebook for the Game Crafter designer discussion, which only started a few months back, maybe the beginning of this year, I think. And it's it's grown very, very well. And for a long time before that, kind of the main interactions was through their chat window on their website. And I myself uh, couldn't really handle, I think, the amount of stimulation uh, of the constant notifications because, again, their audience is from all over the globe as well. And uh, to have a ping going at the corner of my screen all the time kind of threw me off a little bit. So I'm glad that they've also uh, sp spread out or, or shared their own community in a different way for others to accommodate them, you know, uh, per their needs and such. And that is why communities are, are so great uh, because I think the established ones will kind of go on without you, um, which which doesn't sound great right now, but I mean to say if you ever need to take a, a mental break or a little bit of time off, you know, from something that you're up to, you can absolutely do so and, and come back just as well, from my hope, uh, as you were before you left. And that's the human connection and value of community for me that I found is that I have people who I can go to, yeah, with, with certain problems and things, design or not even, and, and just share and know that I uh, have a backing a little bit. And it's, it's nice to have somebody who has your back or a few people. Um, the communities in board game design are especially friendly. I should also probably uh, have preceded this entire talk by saying the board game design industry and board game industry as a whole is so friendly and I think counter to a lot of others' expectations when it comes to industry culture in general. Because board games are such a small and growing uh, place, uh, most of the time the competition is, is merely friendly and things are so connected that if uh, an issue were to arise, it doesn't take long for, for that news to kind of spread. Um, so in that way, if you're working on a design of your own and you're afraid that someone's going to steal it, I assure you that the probably best thing that you can do is actually share it yourself. Uh, be, be active and, and bring it to the world so that the more attention that it gets and the more people in the community who become aware of it can can fall back to it in case something else that is suspicious uh, arises and say, oh no, it was X person who actually had been uh, working on this first. Uh, I'll go off on a little bit of a tangent and say that in board games, if you happen to have the same idea as someone, uh, it's generally not a problem because, because there are so many different uh, ways to design a game with a similar theme or premise that by the end of it, it's very likely that you'll end up with a different project than uh, what your kind of rival is working on. Uh, the other thing too is that if someone, if your concern is that someone will steal your idea, uh, the ideas are the easy part and it's the implementation and execution is a really good word uh, that takes the longest amount of time. So though someone may be inspired, uh, it's not usually the case that they will be able to rip your idea or rebuild your idea uh, exactly the way that you have because uh, just like with any other design, it is not a linear process by any means, very iterative. And I myself am finding myself uh, going back and forth between two different ideas that I've seen before uh, because of the different stages in development that I'm finding myself in with the game where something that wasn't so relevant before now is maybe a little bit more appropriate. And that's what the community can can help you uh, figure out as well. If you need to vent and and express uh, a little bit of yeah frustration or or not knowing where to go from here, uh, dropping in the question uh, to the community and seeing 
what their thoughts are is absolutely a great way to, to help navigate and hopefully uh, guide you to the right track for you and your design. I've mentioned uh, Facebook as a great community, but the Twitter universe is also great for board games. And I know that at least right with the culture of the industry that so many designers are willing to answer your questions if you have them. Yeah, uh, it's not, I don't think, hmm, as much of a barrier to entry as tweeting at your favorite celebrity, but I myself am not on Twitter, so I can't quite speak to that just yet. Uh, there are other kinds of networks and databases like Board Game Geek, where designers, players, publishers from all over will also uh, be asking each other questions about rules clarifications and getting answers back. Um, ask me anything, contests and raffles, so many ways that you can get involved, uh, if not as a leader, then just as a member and participant. There's nothing wrong with that either. And hopefully, yeah, my main takeaway is that we can find something that's right for you if that is okay yeah just you don't have to put any more effort in than than you feel and that is my pretty much yeah favorite part about about community as a whole is that you will hopefully yeah be gravitating towards people who you would gel with anyway and so keep them close and uh you know be thankful for the communities that have gotten you to that point but as far as I can tell, yeah, just make some friends, make some connections, and just be happy, hopefully, with uh, with where you are. And if you're not, well, reach out to me, yeah. Um, again, on Facebook, I'm Ben Moy, uh, parentheses, Men Boy. It's a bit of an inside joke there. Uh, and, and send me a, a Facebook message, and, and we can talk. Uh, you can send me an email at Benjamin W. Moy, B-E-N. J-A-M-I-N-W-M-O-Y at gmail.com. And we can talk about design too um, or, or whatever else is on your mind, really. I'm just happy to hopefully give back as much as I can. And with any luck, you'll also find that many communities are the same way. So to kind of wrap up here, uh, not just with board game design, but any community as a whole, as a social species, I think that humans absolutely enjoy interaction and very much, yeah, in times of isolation, uh, it hopefully doesn't take too much for you to reach out a little bit. And hopefully uh, you can, yeah, whether reach out to a new group that is one that you are not yet part of or to reach out to someone who you haven't talked to in a little bit, brighten, brighten each other's days and continue to be a very community driven world thank you yeah i think what i'd like to do at this point is uh start with some questions uh so please yeah let's feel free to read some out and i'll answer them to the best of my ability in the time that we have left That's a, a really awesome question. Yeah, thank you, Josh, and thank you, Katie, for reading it. In fact, uh, I'll go ahead and pull this out one more time. Breakdancing Meeples, I had been showing off to a few friends in its prototype stage. Uh, this was shortly after or during the Kudo Plays competition that I entered it in. And uh, as a few of my friends, yeah, had kind of picked that up. When posts came up about similar ideas sprouting, uh, they kind of alerted me to it and were saying, oh no, is everything going to be okay? And at least for me, uh, I, I thought so. I was totally fine with it. And I want to share, yeah, that creativity with others. I hope that the people um, who kind of, yeah, dropped all of their game pieces and thought, oh, that's kind of a cool idea, had the same moment, the same spark that uh, will have stemmed or encouraged them to, to move forward with it um, if they have not then maybe they'll have seen this game and um, if they have moved forward with it i would i would love to see it as well so that's just it is there's so much going on in this community in the world at large that we can't really know exactly everything can we uh and josh i would say that yes it has absolutely happened to me um in the same way uh, but from the reverse i was designing a game about a dinosaur park escape a little bit inspired by titles like Dinosaur Island and 
uh, Dinogenics, and then Target and Ravensburger releases their game Jurassic Park Danger like the week after I started, and I had to just check it out and see for myself it was if it was uh, more or less what I was working at. Uh, the answer was yes, and so I kind of shelved the design for now. But having started it means that I have a foundation for maybe something else, another design instead, and just having that practice as an exercise, I think, is totally worth speaking on. And I can share this experience then, this story, with uh, community members who are new and are concerned with it. So in so many ways, I think it is just a self-fulfilling kind of um, industry and hobby. Yeah. So no worries whatsoever. I, I'm not bitter at all. I, I could not control that someone else had a very similar idea to myself. Uh, and I'm just happy, yeah, that they found success with it. I'm always looking for those silver linings. Uh, I have a question from Tom. Uh, you painted a very rosy picture of the industry, but could you talk about a negative interaction you had and how you made it better? And of course, you don't have to mention names and stuff. Can I ask Tom on YouTube? Of course. Yeah. Thank you, Tom. Let's see. Hmm, most recently, I don't. I wouldn't say that I've had a direct negative interaction, uh, but there have been a few things. Yeah, going on with the world about um, social justices and maybe um, words not being spoken that, that could have been, or kind of questioning um, people's intentions. And the way I hate to say is like, to, this is a really hard one, yeah. Um, I have been in, in quiet support, and I think really what should have been done on my end is to be a lot more vocal about such things. I try not to trudge up, um, you know, problems, and I hope that uh, people, yeah, can grow from from where they have been, having gained so much more knowledge about the world and about issues and, and whatnot. Um, but to make it better, I mean, I don't want to say that it's just time. Uh, we can't only wait, but action does need to be taken. And I think for me, I played as much of a role as I was comfortable with um, in supporting charities and such that were uh, very much involved and rooted in those causes. And that was my way of giving back. Um, but I'd like to think that being outspoken is, is very much an important thing uh, so that those who are maybe victims um, can know that there are people who are on their side and have their backs, like I touched on previously. Uh, one thing that I also forgot to mention in the talk is community, the way that I've kind of immersed myself in it is by reacting to posts. Uh, it's so easy to read something on the internet and not uh, react or not let somebody know that you've seen it, but I kind of thrive maybe a bit too much on, on reactions and letting uh, people know that I, that I see them. Um, so Facebook has a slurry uh, a slurry, yeah, of, of different types of reactions uh, to let people know that that you are kind of, yeah, aware of what they're saying and agree with it or um, are very much in favor of it. And leaving comments, that's right, uh, as we kind of touched on before, can, can be another great way to vocalize uh, your, your agreement with them. Uh, so I'd like to think that trying to, yeah, turn turn it around that way as a silver lining is a great thing because uh, so much of the screen and, and the internet world that we live in is anonymous. Um, but being able to uh, put your full support into things um, is also very powerful. Right on. Uh, we have another question from YouTube. Uh, let's see, community is vital for a designer, obviously, but getting lots of different feedback on a game can be stressful. So how do you as a designer uh, with a huge network, decide which feedback to incorporate? Oh my, uh, very biasedly, no. So uh, I think for game design specifically, the best way to sift through feedback is just as I mentioned before about finding the different communities is by taking all of it, receiving all of it, and thanking everyone uh, for providing it to you and their time for playing your maybe rudimentary prototype at the time in development. Uh, but then, the next step, I would say, is to think about the audience that you're designing for, who you want to be playing your game, and then, uh, let's see, picking the best pieces of feedback that you feel would apply to them. 
Uh, just as community can be very, very large, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's a super loyal community either. Uh, numbers are very important and very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not showy, but impressive, can be very impressive uh, with YouTube channels uh, and, and such. But if you don't have a, an active community uh, who is engaged, then, then those numbers kind of just uh, turn to dust and, and wisp away. Uh, we kind of see that, yeah, with a lot of Kickstarter creators for the first time who have uh, created email lists of 200, 300, 400 people, and only a small percentage of them will come and, and fully back uh, your project or your game. And uh, that is, I think, who you, yeah, really actually want to be appealing to when you're asking these questions and when you are writing posts and, and sharing promotions and, and all that sort of thing, because the other 90% uh, are not going to really be there. They are a little bit more of the, of the passive sort of support. Um, but if you are able to create a loyal following, then that is who uh, will absolutely help you. Uh, so yes, long-winded answer. First part was the uh, target audience. And then the second part is the target experience that you want, I think, to provide to your players also. Um, just because uh, a designer who may have a few more titles under their belts than you says that you should try something, uh, I would say to take it with a grain of salt because they may not necessarily be thinking of the same audience again that you are for the same experience. Generally, they are kind of onto something, I would say. Uh, but really, you want to listen to uh, not exactly the words that they're saying, but the problem that they're communicating with those words. You have to dig a little bit deeper through their notes about why they feel this way and why they want something to change. Uh, if this card is unbalanced, uh, which you might see as a Facebook comment, again, one of those very quick and easy comments, um, it's not entirely helpful. But if you can probe a little bit deeper and ask them, uh, was it the cost for the effect? Was it just the power in general? All these sorts of things can then tie into, oh, actually, maybe it's the economy that has a problem in the game. And so instead of changing that specific card, you can take a broader overhead view at the full system and see uh, what could be addressed there. So those, yeah, are kind of my top two. And I realize, yeah, that we're running out here. So. Thank you, YouTube. Are, are there any other questions, Katie, that I can answer before we finish off? All we have time for, all right. always engage with the YouTube chat stream, so we'll see you on there. And of course, just a good place Discord uh, after party after all this. Perfect. Uh, thank you so much for sharing your insights, Ben. You bet, Katie. Thank you, Faithful by Design. I'd be curious to know how the board game design community has influenced and been good to you. Please leave it in the comments below and let us know, yeah, just how important it's been. Or maybe if you are a little nervous about jumping in, why that is and see if we can help you through. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and click that bell icon so that you can be notified about when the next video goes up. As always, I'm Ben. This has been another episode of the Board Game Blueprint and together, let's build something great.